It's nice and early. We're going to do a little bit of singing, so I don't want to hurt you. Switch up high, loosen up the hips, side to side. You know your body better than I do, so if you know some stretches that work for you, that don't work for me, that's cool. Apologies to those of you who came to my session yesterday. Um, you will quickly learn, as my high school kids do, I only have about 10 jokes, and you'll hear them every day. So roll your shoulders back. I like backward shoulder rolls. They leave you in a nice open position for singing. Forward shoulder rolls leave you looking like my grandma. I love my grandma, but she doesn't sing well. So backward shoulder rolls. Stays up and out as the arms come down and boom! Turn to your left and right, introduce yourself to your neighbor and apologize for hitting him on the head when your arms came down. <laughs> Make a clever joke to cover up the fact that you tuck your shirt back in. Great. Boom! Side of it. Oral literacy is being able to look at things and translate them into sound. 
as opposed to being able to give a look at things and say that's a G sharp, that's a five line staff, that's a, a quarter note, whatever those words mean. It's not really necessary for most kids. You know, the, the terminology helps, and I do think it should be reinforced continuously. But if I had to choose, I'd rather a kid be able to look at a score, not know what a quarter note is, not know what A sharp is, but be able to look at it and produce the sounds, as opposed to a kid being able to look at it and say, that's three quarter notes, I'll know my two eighth notes on a G sharp. I go, what does that sound like? And they go, that's three quarter notes, followed by two eighth notes on a G sharp. I'd much rather have the kid who can go, la, 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 or la, 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 la. I have to remember what I give you in the presentation. All right, sorry about that. So that's what I would prefer. I find that most of us in our situations, we don't have enough time to teach everything. I make choices. The choice I go for is to focus on oral literacy at the, at the expense of a lot of vocabulary, a lot of music reading, a lot of music theory stuff. I integrate it as much as I can, but I find that I'd rather have my kids lead with those oral skills than anything else. So that's what we're gonna get exposed to. So I can get a quick feel of the room. How many of you have used movable dough solfege in the past or currently? Lovely. How many have never used it before? Awesome. That is so cool. My water bottle's over here. I lose it all the time. That's fine. I usually have five or six of these in a given room because I put them in different places. And for every birthday and Christmas, the kids give me a new water bottle because they know that I use them all the time. So at any given moment, this is very strange. I only have one water bottle. Usually I have zero water bottles or I have 12 water bottles. <laughs> anyway. So we're gonna go through, um, basically I'm gonna take you from scratch what I would do with a group of unauditioned freshman high school singers who have never had any pre previous exposure to choir music, reading music, literacy, anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna take, we have to move at a pretty quick pace, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm counting on you to understand that this needs to be broken down into three to five minute chunks per rehearsal, as opposed to just, bam, here it all is. Um, but my new kids who I get in, in, a, in a given term, if I get new kids in the spring and I have most of the kids in the fall, they'll just get a crash course in, an, in one or two rehearsals to catch them up, and they're totally cool with that because the other kids are so invested in the music literacy that they're like, yeah, 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 no, trust me, you, you'll totally want to do this. So I don't have to do the little mini lessons anymore because my kids are so into the literacy. We actually sight read in four parts in every concert, and uh, we had an all-district concert where we did that sight read and sight soul fashion in four parts. The middle schoolers kept coming up to me, after, coming up to their parents, to their, their teacher, and to me afterwards, saying, "I can't wait to get to high school to learn that cool hand sign thing, where I get to look at music and know what it sounds like." I had a whole bunch of, I had like 20 freshmen sign up this year, um, very small school system, um, who, who deliberately came in and said, "The reason I'm here is because I want to learn how to read music. That's so cool. That's what I want to do." So they're they're pumped about it. So when you get into this stuff, kids can really get into it. You have to give them that energy. If you go up and go. I do solfege today. Do, re, mi, re, do, mi. If you do that for 20 minutes, they're gonna wanna jump off a cliff or something. But if you go up there and you're engaged and you're fun and you're doing different things with it, and you're throwing it around, they'll get into it too. So let's start, forget everything we know about solfege. You can remember it when we do the sight reading. I don't want you to forget everything you know about solfege. But pretend that you are 12 years old, you just came up from eighth grade, you've never done chorus before, but this weird, wacky guy came into your school weeks ago and said, hey, I'm the high school choir director. I totally want you all to sign up. If you have any interest in singing, even if you think your voice is crappy as heck, come into class. That's like saying that I don't understand math, so I shouldn't take algebra. That's dumb. You should be in algebra because you don't understand math. You need to learn it. So if you can't sing, come to singing class because you'll learn how to sing. And you went, you know, everyone else thinks this guy's a freak, but I guess I'm going to give it a shot. So you're sitting in the first rehearsal, first day of high school choir. You're a freshman, you have no previous exposure, and we're just gonna get started making some sounds. We've already finished our warm up, those who come in late, you get a little stretching, vocalizing, that kind of thing. But I trust that your voices are relatively loose after two days. <laughs> <sighs> Sing beautifully, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sometimes you're worried about singing in front of your kids this much. Don't stress. I sing wrong notes all the time, and the kids notice, and it's great because they're audio, they're hearing. They're going, Mr. Keen, was your was that dough a little bit off? And I go, Yeah, it was. Good job hearing that. That's what I want you to develop. I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend planning mistakes. There'll be plenty of them on their own. So now they have labels for these things. Cool. Now there's some labels to differentiate. So now when I sing, you show me what I'm singing. Do Have a tune, so don't worry about your mistakes, that's fine. Good job, good job. So eyes closed, that's differentiated instruction there. Um, one, once you're ready to assess, everybody's eyes closed, you're individually doing dictation at the college level. So you want to move up to, to more solfege, all that kind of stuff. So let's skip ahead, pretend that I've introduced all the other solfa syllables. I'm a Kodai trained person, so I usually go either so mi la to start or do re mi to start with the older kids. You add in the full pentatonic, do re mi so la do la so mi re do, and sing it out of tune when you're giving a clinic. And uh, I highly recommend that so that people feel very confident about themselves. Like, I can totally sit better than this guy. I should be giving this session. <laughs> anyway, my kids say that, so like, I should be running this class. Mr. Keen doesn't know anything. <laughs> I'm really bad at the piano, which is one of the reasons I teach my kids to read. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it's a savior thing. I had somebody come in and observe me once. They're like, oh, you're pretty good at the piano, because I, I write chord reductions for every song. And they're like, oh, you're pretty good. You know, you said you weren't bad. And I have a kid who's like amazing classical pianist, been playing 15 years, perfect pitch. He can listen to a recording and play it out the first time. I turned to Paul, I was like, Paul, I'm not good at the piano, am I? And he goes, he goes Mr. Keene, you're somewhere between suck and stink. <laughs> that's, that's good, because I don't suck. I can play a few things, but I'm not really quite up to sleep. I, 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 I tell the kids, as long as it's funny, I'm cool with you interrupting class. That's fine. If you don't make me laugh, then you're going to get attention. But if you make me laugh, it's fine. It's all good. Laughter lubricates learning. It gets the endorphins flowing, gets the neurotransmitters moving. The brain is more engaged. You're more likely to remember it. You have a smile on your face. You're going to remember this stuff. Cool, cool, cool. So first stage. Listening. This is all covered in your packet. I big apologies to Edwin Gordon. I'm bastardizing his theories here. If you've done any music learning theory training or done the reading, I'm way oversimplifying it right now, but we've only got like two minutes to cover it as I integrate it in here. So apologies. Please look up Gordon on his own and let him know that I am ruining everything he ever did. Five learning language vocabularies. We learn music like we learn language. First, we need a listening bank. We need to hear all of the sounds. That's why I go loo 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 and you're not repeating them. You're just getting sounds in your ear. Most of our high schoolers, middle schoolers, they come in with a lot of music. Elementary kids, not so much. So they need to hear a lot of music. They need to have this in their bank. Babies babble in the, in the phonemes, the, the syllables and sounds of every language on earth. But the ones that they hear are the ones that are able to reproduce later. After six months to a year, they're no longer producing those sounds that aren't in their language. That's why you see differences with R and L in Oriental languages. You see Americans who can't pronounce the umlaut. You see, um, uh, my kids cannot get a pure O vowel. It's ow, ow every time because as American speakers, we can keep the corners of our lips straight to our ears and we have no problem pronouncing every single word we need to pronounce. There's no issue whatsoever to do this, so we have no need to develop the muscles that make us go like this. <laughs> Minnesota, you know? So when you work with other wires, sometimes you get that nice slow round sound with advantage to being in Canada. Um, they're, they're starting to get the O, they're starting to get but, uh, so, so anyway, listening vocabulary, they need to hear all of these sounds first. That only takes 20 seconds. Don't spend five minutes of a lesson going loo, 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 loo. You can play some examples. You can sing for 10 seconds. Just get some of the patterns in their ear before they have to repeat them. Repeat on neutral syllable, like we just did. That is a uh, that is the speaking vocabulary, which comes after the listening vocabulary. It's the ability to reproduce sounds automatically. So you're not really thinking, you're not really figuring out what they mean, you're just going, oh, I just heard that, here it is. <clears throat> thinking vocabulary is where you take the patterns from your speaking vocabulary, which come from your listening vocabulary, probably do over here, listening vocabulary, speaking vocabulary. Thinking vocabulary is where you take those patterns you had that you could repeat, and you rearrange them into a new idea. So if you know, do, re, mi, and mi, re, do, and do, mi, so, you can now produce, 
do, mi, so, mi, re, do. You never heard that particular pattern, but you're producing it out of patterns you've heard before. That's thinking, it also, the thinking vocabulary also includes improvisation. That's a whole another session. Stephen Paparo from UMass yeah. gave a great session on that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend contacting him <laughs> if you have any interest in improv. We'll do a lit, we may cover some of that if I have time at the end. We probably won't cover that. So, <laughs> thinking vocabulary. So, we know the patterns. Do, re, mi, sing after. Do, re, mi, re, do. Mi, re, do. Do, mi, so. Do, mi, so. sing do re mi and then you pick the second pattern immediately after so do re mi mi re do or do re mi do mi so or whatever you pick it based on the patterns we know ready we start together and do re mi do mi so nice nice so that's thinking vocabulary rearranging things we could also go around the room and say okay with those notes we know do re mi so pick a three note pattern and produce it on your own, different than the person before you. So I go, do, re, mi. Next person might go, mi, re, do. Next person might go, do, mi, so. Exactly, you go around, people are terrified at first. After a while, they get used to it, they go with it. You do the big group stuff at first so they can get comfortable with the idea of trying it when no one can hear them. You take volunteers first and then move on to assessing everybody. Now you're doing individual assessments, you record that. It's great for that documented progress. And so look, First day, they were trying to improv with three notes, they couldn't figure it out. Last day, they're improvising four bar, four bar melodies with a full melodic, with full uh, diatonic scale. Some of them are using chromatics and key changes. So you can see the progress step by step. There you go. From the thinking vocabulary, rearranging things that you've been able to repeat, we move into the reading vocabulary. That's what we'll do right now. It's when I say reading, I do not mean notation. I do not mean writing. I mean translating visual stimulus into oral stimulus. That is all I mean. Visual to oral. It does not have to be ink on a page. Visual to oral is reading. Sing. Raise your hands if they're helpful. just do that. I'm in the states. Like, I forget sometimes which choir knows fa and which one doesn't. They go, Mr. King, what was that? Were you, were you telling us that we were out of tune? Is that flat? No, that's... And they go, Mr. King, isn't there a note between me and so? Yes, there is. We'll learn that in two months. Hold on to that. <laughs> You're now reading. Visual to oral. I'm going to take you through my quick two-minute demonstration lesson. I highly recommend this. If you ever have to do it, I actually don't recommend it because you'll steal my jobs. But if you ever have to do an interview, say, I want to teach a mock lesson. Because some schools require it, so they'll be like, oh, he wants to. Some schools don't, so you'll be the only one they've seen teach. And everyone else, they just have residents. Who are they going to hire? This is my quick go-to five-minute lesson to show how I can teach people who've never learned how to read music how to read music. Usually just do it with one, two, three. I don't even move into solfege, but you guys are smart, so you can handle it. So, read from my hands. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Yeah. 
I did love when I ended that. We did uh, the finale from Les Mis this last term. That was our big, our big finale. So you have the tomorrow comes, that big huge thing at the end. Of the so the, the day before the concert, we're like, do you hear the people say tomorrow? See you guys tomorrow. And I walked out the room and they're like, Mr. K, you can't do that. So I highly recommend once a year, don't do it more than once or they will hate you. Once a year, stop on a big five seven and then walk out the room. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Anyway, so cross it all out, erase the wall. Again, like I said, in an interview in the first introductory lesson, I'm doing do re mi. That's it. I'm not going on to the whole thing. You guys are smart. You can handle it. You see the progression. Do re mi fa mi re mi fa so do. Signature not necessary. There's no flat. So you don't know what these letters are. Some people are saying, oh, but there's no flat there, so it's not F major. There's no treble flat, so it's not an F. <laughs> 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 I like to be wise with the kids. <laughs> we also like to be wise with me. I give them anonymous surveys at the end of every term. The number one uh, comment I get on how could Mr. Keene improve better as a singer, uh, improve better as a teacher, they, they do how, how they improve, how the group improves, how I can improve. I got from one kid, uh, we, should, we should laugh more at Mr. Keene's jokes. He, um, it, would, it, would, it would help us you know, have fun. And then the broadman said, Mr. Keene should have better jokes. <laughs> Another kid said, Mr. Keene should have better shoes. So I don't want new shoes. <laughs> like, Mr. Keene's haircuts look stupid. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks, guys. But it's really hard to get them to give. Other teachers are like, I can't believe you would let them give you anonymous sermon. They'd be so mean. It's so hard to get authentic criticism. I don't know if you guys find that. I, I hope you do, because I would be sad if you just opened up and you're like, every kid's like, you stink. Or you're between suck and stink. It's called a callback. I studied some uh, stand up comedy once. <laughs> anyway, um, so anonymous surveys, uh, usually for me, I have to like beat it into their heads. Please give me something to improve. On that note, when you give me feedback on the little app or when you email me for feedback after this session, please give me things to improve. I have 60 years left here. If I was already good, then I just needed to be a carpenter or something. I want, it. I want to improve, I want to learn. So I know there are things I'm doing wrong. This is how we get to reading notation. Last <laughs> vocabulary we had, uh, listening vocabulary builds into reading, voca into speaking vocabulary, builds into thinking vocabulary, improv producing new patterns, builds into reading vocabulary, visual to oral, that's all reading means, visual to oral, do not think it means paper and ink, visual to oral. It can be this, it can be letter names and stick notation, it can be little posters on the wall, it can be different kids standing at different levels to represent pitches, or whatever, you probably wouldn't want to do that with high school, they think you're a freak, but they think I'm a freak anyway, so they pretty much go with it. Last is writing, opposite of reading, oral to visual. That's all it is, oral to visual. It doesn't have to be notation, it's oral to visual. So the kids are producing patterns in their heads and producing them in a visual way. Oh look, hand signs are so perfect because now we don't have to write out. If you have a uh, those little whiteboards, those like lap whiteboards, those work great for the kids, erasable markers, they can write notation, stick notation, letter names, that kind of thing. The writing phase is really hard to get into, particularly with amateur choirs. My kids are just kind of getting there now. Um, I, I, my choir right now is about 80% freshmen, have never done choir before on auditioned group. Um, I've had them for, it must be like five, six months now. You guys would know too, from September, I guess. I do know the math teacher too. <laughs> Oops. Um, anyway. So writing is, is hard to get into, but it's the last stage though. You can't write until you can hear these things and until you know what the visual representation is and you can translate it sound, then you can start producing sounds in your head and reproducing them out in writing. Easiest way to get started with that is the dictation. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. Give me your hand signs. Do, re, lu, 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 Make sure you scoop on the bottom tonic. Good job. I now know how all of you are doing in terms of. So the, the, the ba was obviously the weakest. Any surprises there? No. So the rest of it was fine. Cool. Cool. Dictation is just oral into visual. That's all it is. So this is the start of composition. Composition means you need to create the sounds new in your head from the bank of patterns that you have, and then present them to rhythm. Dictation is just I'm giving you an oral pattern, and you're producing it to rhythm. So higher level thinking skill to produce the sound on your own than it is to get the sound from somebody else. But you want to progress sequentially, step by step. Again.
again, all of this is in your notes. I get that I speak at a million miles a minute, <laughs> and this is probably going over some of your heads. That's cool. It's all in the packet. There's like 10 pages of writing in there. It took me a long time. And then my computer crashed, and I lost all of it. <laughs>
This works on three. This is called a tuning board. Yes. <laughs> if I had a pitchfork, well, some of my some some things I say to my kids, they think I'm the kind of person that would have a pitchfork. But yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> this one kind of slips between my buttons sometimes, so that's why I always have extra. These are for you too, don't worry. You will have fun. So yeah, I always, tuning fork, I love, I give my kids tuning forks too. Find your pitch from the other pitches, figure out what A is when you're giving P, and then use solfege to get there. So let's say we're gonna sing in B flat, that'll be a comfortable key for us to start here. So what's A? Yeah. <laughs> no, what, yeah, what's A? 440. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer. What's A? The first letter of the alphabet. Good job. You guys have fit in so well in my high school choir. A is going to be what syllable in the key of B flat? T. Exercise, you can look 
look at it if you need it. You can drop the hand signs by now if you, do, if you want to, but I find them helpful, so if you want them. Do, mi, so, the tempo, and go. Do, mi, so, mi, do. I say this in, in the packet, in the uh, other handout. 90, 
99% of our kids are not going to be professional musicians. Admit it. So, some of them, maybe 5 to 10%, maybe 20% of your grade school system will go and major in music. Of those, 5 to 10% will graduate with a degree in music. Of those, 5 to 10% will be teaching music in three or four years. Of those, 5 to 10% will be teaching in 10 years or doing any kind of professional music. Most of the people I went to school with are not musicians anymore. Some of them didn't graduate with it. Those who graduated with degrees, a couple got jobs their first year. The rest are still working at Shop and Save or you know whatever, or could have found some other better paying jobs in school, or they did two <laughs> years of school and then said, you know, I can't handle it. So they don't need a lot of that knowledge. And they will get it somewhere else. In an unauditioned high school choir, even in the top level choir, they don't really need to know this is an A flat. This is if you have time, sure. But what they could really use is some ear skills. Because they're going to go sing in a choir. They're going to go sing to their baby. They're going to go sing with their family. They're going to sing along <coughs> with a campfire with a guitar, hopefully. That's my hope. My hope for my kids is not that they're going to be stars, not that they're going to be Broadway singers, not that they're going to be music teachers. Some of them will, and I encourage those. My hope is that when they're 70, they'll be singing with their kids. <laughs> that when they're 40, they'll be singing in a community choir. That when they're in college, they'll sing in an acapella group. My hope is that they sing, that they make music. And if I got that, I think that's better than 90%. Yes. Sorry, no, question. Yes. What are you using for rhythm solos? Mentioned that in the packet. Um, Takadimi and a combination of Takadimi and counting. Um, I, I find that Takadimi works better to get started, to get the patterns in their ear, and counting works better once they're rehearsing and going into the bars and stuff. We do a lot of contemporary 20th century music. Right now we're doing my unauditioned high school choir, 80% freshmen, never sung in a choir before. Light of a Clear Blue Morning by Craig Ella Johnson, eight part splits, 20th century stuff. This Marriage by Eric Whitaker. Um, and then they're doing the blues improv bass line. They're all actually have an assignment right now to bring in one of their favorite pop songs for the chord chart. We're gonna translate the A minor, F sharp major, whatever, into solfege chords. They're gonna create their own arrangements throughout the choir, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the, the, this marriage failed with my, I, my college choir. 80 people auditioned, they couldn't do it because they couldn't get the key changes. It's all parallel chords, if you've heard it. So every line is moving in the same direction by the same interval at the same time. So if you don't know that your part is the third, then it's very easy to slip up to the fifth because every line's moving in the same direction. High school kids got it in a second. They're like, oh, I'm on so. Why would I possibly say me? I'm on so. That's dumb. Why would somebody mess that up? I don't know. I don't know. Why would any person in college choir mess it up? So uh, anyway, I give them all those drills. I give them the packet. Then they can start working through it on their own. You'll see there's modes in there. I prefer modes um, based on their syllable. So Dorian is gray to ray. Regine is me to me. It, I, the reason for that is I like my kids to get that chromatic syllables come when you see an accidental. When you see a G sharp, that's going to be something outside of our normal seven syllables. That's why I use law based minor, that's why I use uh, syllable based uh, modes. I, I prefer that. There are tons of advantages to do based minor too. I have a copy of these drills in do based minor. If you want them, give me your email afterwards. Um, I'll have a little yellow page in the back where you can write your email addresses. Yes? Why do you use um, prime instead of K in your group there? I just prefer the open aisle vowel. It's, it's a call. My, I tell my kids that both are acceptable, that they may run into the others in other groups and to use whatever one's comfortable. I just use whatever's comfortable for me at the moment. And I change it from day to day sometimes. Sometimes I'll say Tay and they get it. They get it. OK, that's a flat group. Yeah, they get it. So given the packets, they work through all that. Now let's look at what we do. I'm going to give you guys an actual example. This is my, um, sorry, I'll start panning this out. If you could help me out, that would be great. If you have a pencil or pen, that would be great. If you don't, I have some right here. Anybody need them? Pencil or pen? I, I always tell my kids to write in pencil in case they mess up, but I, I trust you guys. I let, this is a very important point, and I will fight to the death on this with anyone who wants to, and 90% of people will really fight with me on this. I let my kids write in every single letter for the soul I gladly let them write in the letters for the soul coach. My philosophy is that if that gets them to reading faster, that's what matters. They're just reading the letter names to get the soul fetish syllables, they're still audio. It doesn't Sorry. matter. My, my definition of reading music is not reading dots and turning it into sound. It's reading, it's visual stimulus going into work. If the visual stimulus that's easiest for them is hand, if they want to sketch every hand sign above every note, cool, go with it. Most of them will just write the letter names. My also no, no, no. got near perfect sight reading scores when they weren't able to write on the sight reading thing there, but they write on every sight reading example. All right, Julian, I ran out. Do so it, you need this? But, and then when I go back and look at their binders, my section leaders have the first solfege syllable mark, they have key changes mark, they have the weird accidentals mark. They don't mark every single note. I went to my base section leader's binder the other day to give him another packet. He does band every other day. 
I looked in there, he didn't have a single syllable marked in front of me. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Or else it's like, 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 it's that's all you need. Last sharp is T, last flat is five. It gives you your soul fetch. I also love law based minor for this reason. Sweet. Okay. Last sharp is T, last flat is five at a time. Uh, if go based minor, then last sharp is T or C. So last, uh, last sharp is, uh, last flat would be Fa or uh, low. Low? Yeah. I'm not good at it. My school taught mixed Go soul fetch. That's why I did my Kodai training, and for two years, but I got so good at movable dough solfege because I was doing movable dough in my head while saying the fixed dough syllables. So it's like this really complicated translation yeah. thing. You know, when I say visual to oral, it's visual to oral to new visual to different oral. Like it's like four stages of reading. So then when I took off that handicap and I could just read with movable dough, I'm like, oh my god, this makes so much sense. <laughs> so we're gonna start reading this. Feel free to mark in all of your solfege. That is totally cool. Let's go ahead with um, just just volunteer wise. You can take it in whatever octave is comfortable. Let's do just soprano, alto, tenor, tenor, bass. I see more uh, low, low men over here. So bass, tenor, soprano, alto. Marking your soul bench. Last sharp is T, so you all start on. You all start on. No, you all end on. No. This is the actual sight reading example for my winter concert with my kids. On audition high school choir, 80% freshmen. They read this on stage in two minutes. I give them one, the section leaders have tuning forks. Section leaders have tuning forks. They know what, how the tuning fork relates to the key, and this one it's pretty easy. I didn't want them to stress out, so. They go off into their sections while I'm explaining what they're doing to the audience. The audience doesn't get it unless you tell them that they've never seen this piece before. So audiate it, you know, work through it with your hand signs. They'll kind of hum to each other. If someone's having trouble with a particular interval, they'll look to the other, they'll look to the section leader and they'll go, oh, that's fa to T, that's a tricky one. It's fa T, they'll, they'll do that for them. Um, you guys won't have section leaders, so you have to just kind of audiate it. Tenors especially, you'll want to mark in those runs. They're tricky. I had a really good tenor section this year. You can tell by looking at this, the, the ability levels of my kids, <laughs> based on how I wrote the example. You can tell which sections are stronger. Do you think the basses or the tenors are better? Because this is a, a session example, I don't even have a copy of my thing, so I'm not going to know if you're right or not. I don't know if there's any extra copies floating around. Good luck. Uh, cool. Thank you. Sopranos, anybody else who wants to join them, go ahead and try. Um, let's do some, uh, yeah, just Sopranos. Sopranos? Uh, sopranos and Alphas. Sopranos. <coughs> Lower parts, you should be audiating your part right now, hand signing or audiating. Meaning producing sound inside your head, audiate is the equivalent to visual. Soprano and alto. Do, 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 sorry. One and two and three and go. Do, re, mi, fa, so. self-assessment. It's a much more important skill. I don't believe in sight reading. It's in my packet there. I don't believe in it as an essential skill for a musician. 0.01% of our kids are going to need to really sight read, meaning hear a piece of music, go. 99% of our kids are never going to have less than a minute to have, look at their score, put some markings in, hear it in their head, hum it through a couple times, and then do it. It's not a practical skill. I don't know why we use it as our main means of auditioning kids in terms of literacy. I don't think literacy means sight reading. I don't think being able to read English means, here's a book, read it right now and know everything it means. I think it means being able to sit with a book and translate it, scan it through, and then read it out loud. I think that's reading more so than just, uh, I don't know why we do cold reading in drama auditions. I don't know why you don't give the kids a second to put interpretation into it. It's an art form. 
Put it all together, four parts, tenors, good luck. We'll take it a little bit faster, just a little bit. Go, good job staying in tune. Go. One, two, and three, and go. Go. demonstration of learning in the classroom. It's demonstration of connections to literacy, translating visual into oral. If you went to the brain session with Dr. Hansen, prosody, meaning the, the, uh, the melodic contour, pitch variation, those things, that's what literacy, uh, what reading specialists are talking about all the time, that's what we're covering in music. Fluency, that's what we're covering in soul fetch. Phonemic awareness, meaning identifying syllables, sounding out, eating, that's what we're doing with the soul fetch syllables. Rhythm is a whole other conversation. I'm not an expert at it. Sorry. I have a million other things I wanted to cover, and I didn't have time today. I'm so sorry. I wish that I had more time for Q&A. There's nothing in this room after this. I will chill here for 30, 40 minutes. If you have any questions, I will apply it to your information. I'm going to put a little pet pad at the back there. I'm going to put down your email. Um, my website is at the bottom here. Uh, the other packet. ChristopherGP.com. Email me, call me anytime. I will be happy to talk about your program. Happy to come in and work with your kids. Great. Happy to do any kind of thing that you want. I love this stuff. It is important work that we do. It is more Don't important to be in high school knowing how to hear That's music cool. and translate it than it is to be knowing the tenor part of the music. Thank you guys for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.